Hi, my name is Christian Hernandez, your GitOps Kingpin over at Acuity, and Argo CD version 2.13 is out. In this version, there are over 40 new features, 50 bug fixes, and 40 documentation updates. There's a multitude of new features, performance, and security updates. In this video, I'm going to be going over the top three things that you should look out for in Argo CD version 2.13. So the first feature I want to talk about is application set previewing. Application set in Argo CD is a way to um, generate multiple applications with a single manifest. So it, it does this by using certain generators in order to generate the applications, uh, the applications in the end. So in this case, I have an application set with using the generator, uh, the Git generator that looks at specific directories in order to generate the application. For example, here I have this Git repo, and in this application set, I'm going to generate applications based on any directory it finds. So in, in this particular case, the application set is going to look in this directory path and going to find all the, the directories inside of that, inside of the specific path and then deploy applications or create applications based on any number of directories with whatever manifests that are inside of those directories. So originally when this was created, this was uh, more of a one manifest and it'll deploy the application. And then there was no clear way to see how the applications were going to get generated. Starting with 2.13, you can actually preview um, the applications that this is going to generate. For example, you may have um, may not have access as an end user to this specific Git repo, or you may be kind of a release engineer that is only responsible for deploying the applications and making sure they're synced, and you don't necessarily um, take part in the Git workflow. And also, you may not necessarily have access to that Git repo, but you want to see what gets generated. So here I have this application set. I have these uh, uh, directory um, defined, like I mentioned before. And uh, this is going to generate an application based on the template that it finds. So in order to do this with 2.13, you can uh, let's drop down to the command line here, and you can run something called uh, Argo CD app set generate. And then what you would do is you would pass it the YAML file um, or whatever manifest that you have that actually um, generates. So in, in, in this case, this application set YAML file here. So then I will um, specify the YAML file. And then uh, I want to output this as a YAML file here. And as you can see, uh, this will generate three applications. So I can I generated these. You see that I have this application. It's going to, it looked in this directory and it found um, three directories, right? It looked in this path and it found three directories that it's going to use to create, generate an application. Here's one of them here. Uh, here's another one here. And then here's the last one here. So this feature allows you to preview or kind of render some of these, um, these uh, the application set template. So that way you can see the applications is going to get generated. This is very good for either previewing what's going to be deployed to your application or if you want to do any sort of debugging, right? So sometimes when we create application set, um, the output isn't exactly what we expected. There was really no way to preview that before applying it to a cluster. Now you're able to preview this um, via the command line starting in 2.13. The next thing I want to talk about is support for regex in applications in any namespace. Starting in 2.5, Argo CD supports managing application resources in other namespace other than Argo CD. So prior to 2.5, if you wanted to deploy an application to Argo CD, you needed to have access to the Argo CD namespace on Kubernetes. After 2.5, the support came in where you can specify specific namespaces where Argo CD would watch for application manifests to be created. This way, operators can delegate creating applications to non-administrators, meaning that um, I can create, as an administrator, I can create a you know kind of private island as it were, kind of segregated outside in, um, in a specific namespace and give users uh, more control over deploying and managing their applications just as long as they are deploying applications in the specific namespace that I've designated. This came with a, a little bit of a challenge when it first came out. Um, you, When you specify a namespace, you would have to specify the namespace by each one, one at a time. 
which is fine if you have um, one, two, three, four, maybe even half a dozen um, namespaces that you're allowing applications. But as your system becomes busier, as you're uh, adding additional tenants to your application, this list can actually get pretty long. So starting in 2.13, you're able to do uh, regex in order to allow or disallow certain application namespaces. So for example, you can have um, app dash star or get ops dash star and any namespace that starts with get ops um, dash will allow applications to be created in that namespace. Conversely, you can actually do a not allowed, meaning that you can provide a regex that doesn't allow a specific namespace um, or a um, doesn't allow a specific um, set of namespaces. So for example, you um, in this regex here, you're saying that it's not allowed. So in order to configure that, you would have to go to um, uh, the config map, right? So you specify the application namespace, but instead of uh, specifying every namespace in this Kubernetes cluster, I'm going to say anything um, that is, any namespace that is not named, not allowed, is allowed. So this is kind of a, a way to think about is here, it is basically adding all namespaces except the namespace not allowed. So once you apply this, you'll be able to deploy applications um, in any namespace except for the namespace not allowed. Here I have a, a, an application project. This application project, um, uh, demo application project is saying that I'm allowing applications to be created in the allowed namespace, and I'm also allowing in the not allowed. However, if you remember the other configuration file, I'm specifying everything except not allowed. So even though I'm specifying not allowed namespace in this configuration, it's not going to work because on the core a configuration of Argo CD as an administrator, I said any namespace except the namespace called not allowed. So here I have an application called um, Simple Go, and I'm going to create this application in the allowed namespace. So let's see how that looks like. Here I'm going to drop into the command line and do kubectl create of the allowed application. If I switch over to my UI, I, you can see that I have this application that is um, that was created because um, I'm, I'm allowed to create this application, and it's gone to the process of syncing. If I do the same thing to um, the not allowed, if I go over here to my um, to my YAML, I can see here that um, I'm deploying this um, application in the not allowed namespace. So even though I created this and it allowed me to create it, Argo CD's policy block this operation and the application isn't created. So this is a quick way to show you how to allow multiple or disallow multiple applications to be created in specific namespaces. The next feature I want to talk about is application sync using impersonation. Now, a little bit of background. Applications are synced with the same service account that Argo CD uses for all its operations. Meaning that in order to use Argo CD, the same service account needs access to any, and in fact, all resources on the Kubernetes cluster. Originally, Argo CD was designed sort of as an early attempt as uh, an IDP, an internal developer platform. So it wasn't too uncommon to give the Argo CD um, application service account cluster admin access in order to do all the operations that it needs to. As we evolve further and further to uh, Argo CD being a more multi-tenant, more um, secure installation, um, this feature was added to where you can specify a certain service account in order to do application syncs. So this is a feature, a new feature, an alpha feature in 2.13, where you can specify a specific service account to do the sync operation on a specific application. And in order to do this, um, you need to enable the application sync impersonation on the uh, config, config map of Argo CD. So how that looks is that um, you set up application sync impersonation enabled equal to true for the application. 
once that's set, you've actually set that now globally for uh, your Argo CD installation. And we're using the same demo app project that we've used in the other demos. And now we've added this little section called destination service accounts. Here for this specific project, you can specify not only the cluster, but the namespace and the de default service account to use in order to do the, the, to do the sync. So here you'll see um, for the destination server. So for any time someone connects to this cluster, so anytime Argo City wants to do a sync operation to this cluster, to this specific namespace, it will use this specific service account. Now, this is a, all the configuration you need. You need uh, to set the impersonation uh, set to true in the config map. You need to set um, the destination service accounts in your app project, whichever those may be and the name of the service account. And the application looks like this. Really, the application, there's really no difference. The application here is the same application as you would use normally, um, even if this feature wasn't enabled. Um, I'm just showing you this so that way you can see there's nothing on the end user side that needs to be done. This is all done on the administration side. And really, it's done really at the app project scope level where you can specify specific service accounts. So dropping down to the command line, um, let's create this application. Once that's created, we can take a look at the UI. And notice here, it, uh, it went into a seeking state, but then it had a failed information, right? It, so it said, the um, here it gives you information that the namespace, uh, the service account uh, BGD deployer does not have access to create um, anything in this cluster. Is that, and not only does it not have access to create, but it has access, uh, doesn't have access to get certain resources. Here, here you'll see um, the information that, that this user is forbidden to get certain information from, the, um, from this resource, right? And so how we can do that, how can we fix that is that we drop down, back down to the command line. And what we see here is that um, we can create, um, we can get the roles, right? So here I pre-created a role Here, I created an admin role. So I created this beforehand. Um, how, what role you create will depend solely on your use case. Uh, for my use case, I created uh, an admin role that basically is able to create uh, most objects in this specific namespace. It's a namespace scoped role. So it's not a cluster role, it's actually a role. Um, and it's a scope specific to this namespace. And I gave it pretty wide permissions for the purposes of this, um, of this demo. But in reality, this will be scoped down depending on what your organization needs. So now, um, if we do uh, kubectl, we get service accounts. Um, you see that we only have the default service account. And if you check back here, it says that we're using a service account called BGD Deployer. So let's uh, create the service account now. So this kubectl create service account in the BGD namespace. Once that's created, um, we need to bind this, uh, this service account to this role. And um, the way to do that is you simply run um, uh, kubectl here. I do a little copy paste. So here, what I'm doing is I'm creating um, a role binding and I'm assigning it to the admin role that I created up here that I previously created. And I'm signing that admin role to the BGD deployer. So once I do that, I can go back to the um, to the UI. I can actually um, terminate the sync and um, start it up again. So once I terminate it, it, it automatically syncs up, it starts again. And I, as you can see, now I'm able to create this um, uh, this application, all these resources, because I not only created the service account, but I gave this service account specific. Um, privileges in order to uh, create resources here. So the use case here is that if you wanted to um, use a specific uh, service account with scoped down um, permissions to be able to deploy applications, you can do that now uh, on the admin side on, on Argo CD, starting with Argo CD 2.13. So those were just some of the quick um, features of Argo CD. Um, please make sure to try out Argo CD version 2.13. Um, with all these new great features, we would love your feedback in the community. And as always, 
The version of Argo CD 2.13 is available on the Acuity platform, fully supported by the creators of the Argo project. Thank you.